Craig, thank you so much, and that was quite an act. And uh, I'm delighted, actually, I'm speaking now. Uh, but at a certain point, I will be stopping, and Craig will take over uh, again. But it's really an enormous pleasure to uh, join Andrew and Craig in welcoming everyone here. Uh, I have a very, very um, sort of simple task, which is to introduce, in a way, the themes and also to be the house manager to a degree in terms of uh, the logistics of the event and how things are going to work in these two uh, days uh, that you're here. Uh, so the first thing is just remind us that we're looking at the electric city. Craig has given a lot of the themes behind it. Philip Rode and I, when we thought up this project with Wolfgang Novak and Ute some uh, effectively year, year and a half ago, thought, how can we talk about the smart city without saying smart city? How, how can we talk about this bundle of very, very complex ideas which doesn't reduce it in a way to a catchphrase, but think of something which is an umbrella which deals with the social, the technical, um, and the, the physical things that we've been concerned with uh, for many years here. So we thought about this term electric city because it has a historical and a future sense. And this is a view of what London might be over time. And we've structured really the whole conference around many of the themes that uh, you see here. It's a two-day event, as you know. It takes place here with lunches and coffee breaks and everything else. And there are a series of logistical issues I want to go through uh, in a moment. But uh, I think just looking at the program, which of course you have here in yellow, in, in the insert uh, in your uh, conference newspaper, you will see that um, there's very different forms of presentation, many of them with PowerPoints, as you can see here. Some of them are discussions at the table in the center, and it's all broken up into more or less three or four major themes. Today, in the morning, we deal with really the scene-setting aspect of the economy, of space, and on technologies and how they affect the bigger picture. We will then move on uh, after that, but before lunch, on issues of the economy and green jobs and how that's clearly related to that. After lunch, we'll be looking at more detailed technologies, what actually is happening in terms of innovation in cities around the world, and importantly, concluding with a discussion about low and high tech, what can we afford, and significantly in different parts of the world, not just in the global north. We will then end at 5.45 and resume tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will take a slightly different tack, very much along Craig's lines, uh, which is looking very at the culture, the politics, and the effect also of the, on the individual, on society, but also the individual at the heart of it. So with Richard Sennett, we will be kicking off on the notion of culture and innovation on in the city. We will be moving to the critical aspect of design of public space and of buildings, and importantly, design of systems of information and access, which are at the heart of this technical revolution, as we might call it. And then we're going to end after lunch by really turning to the heart of some of the issues that have been said is who decides what do policymakers and politicians uh, think about this and what can they actually do about it with a panel of mayors and experts following a discussion with Tony Giddens and others on what cities can do in terms of climate change and all the possibilities of the new infrastructures that have been discussed. This is the boring bit, but I've got to do it. Someone's got to do it. Uh, because of the large number of speakers, we're going to ask you, all of those who are moderating, all of those of you who are speaking, and panel members, to be short and stick to time. There's a little bulb here with flashes. At a certain point, it will flash while I speak, I'm sure. Um, but please be brief, stick to time. And those of you from the floor who have comments and things to say, make yourself energetically be seen, uh, but don't make long statements. If you've got a point, make it. Be very interesting, that's why you're here. But don't go on into long sort of sentences. Keep the time. We do have um, sheets of paper which say five minutes, one minute, and then stop, at which point then you're thrown out. Um, we are live streaming the event from now on, so there will be more people than just the 300 plus who are in the room. We have these coffee and lunch breaks. Please be punctual when you hear the gong come back in so that we can start on time. The emergency exits, I think you can see. The toilets are off the main um, um, room where we're having breakfast and coffee today. They're si signed over there. There's free Wi-Fi. There's a Twitter with the address there. 
And of course, in this case, given that it's the Electric Age Conference, we can't say turn off your mobile phones, but put them on silent. I think that's absolutely uh, central so that you can Twitter and do what you'd like to do, but uh, please do that. Um, I'm looking over there. No, okay, someone else. Now, let me go back and uh, stress one of two of the key themes and some of the research uh, that uh, we've been doing, which of course is um, reinforced and documented in what we call the conference newspaper, which you have here. This um, contains a lot of the research that, um, in fact, Philip and his team have been um, putting together over the last year or so, looking at different cities, but very much starting from these themes of, as we saw in Dan's excellent sort of film presentation at the beginning, of looking at the history both backwards and forwards. Electrification did this to cities. It brought goods, it brought people, as you see here. The great 19th century city was powered in many ways by electricity. Then in the 20th century, more or less, this happened. The car, the petrol-based uh, vehicle, actually took over and turned cities into very, very different sort of environments, spread thinly across the landscape with very negative consequences in terms of the environmental and social impacts. And, of course, electricity is very much still there at the heart of cities and powering everything, not just from buildings, but to the um, little pieces of technology that we carry around with us. When we thought about the electric city and we wanted to talk about it, these are the obvious ways that we can think about it. Uh, these are the mechanisms, the technologies, the systems that have already been alluded to. But we want to focus here on three or four big aspects of the electric city. One is how do you generate energy in a different way? This actually is a power plant, a combined heat and power plant, right in the middle of London, Guy's Hospital, generating, in fact, clean energy right at the heart of London. This is what institutions like universities, like hospitals, and housing projects can actually do. This is another theme we're obviously going to be talking about, and it's to do with transport. It happens to be the Boris bikes, but it could be any systems of moving around the city in as efficient way as possible, and I'll come back to that. A third very, very important theme cutting across is what is the space, what is the place we're making in cities of the future? What does it actually feel like to walk down a street in a new town like Songdo in South Korea? Is it like Hoxton or is it not? And a fundamental aspect is the personal one, which I've already alluded to. How do these technologies allow people to interact, not just with systems, but with each other. There are many mayors here who have been at the forefront of pioneering, of using effectively the new technologies to um, empower and make a difference in terms of people and how they engage in cities. But as a great um, architect no longer with us, Cedric Price said many years ago now, fine, technology is the answer, but what is the question? And these are the questions that we're addressing together. We don't know exactly what those questions are, but they're certainly bigger than the solutions that are being offered through the smart city movement. Let me go back a little bit and talk about what Anshu was um, in a way illustrating with his extraordinary statistics about Asia and India and just point out some of the things that we've been looking at at the LSE for a number of years. This is an extraordinary world map which shows in yellow where people live, where people are. And you know, you'd be Excuse for saying that the Sahara is a bit empty and the Amazon is a bit empty. That's fine. But then you look at Ireland and you wonder where is everybody. You look at most of Spain and say, hey, what's happening there? Australia, no comment. <laughs> but look at Asia. Look at India. Look at the Pacific Rim. And look at the United States and parts of South America. That is where not only is there extraordinary density of human habitation, but as we've heard before, there is growth. And this is where together we have been working on these cities and conferences and studied a whole series of others um, beyond that. In the conference newspaper, we've done a lot of work together with a number of colleagues, too many to mention here, and I'm not going to go through this in detail, but actually looking at where energy consumption is uh, located, where there's more generation of electricity from green sources or non, and there are some very clear uh, public enemies and some clear winners. 
And that's exactly the point at which I will now pause and Craig will come and greet our VIPs. So thank you very much, but we pass on.